Welcome back. Well, it's Tuesday and I uh, took one day off. Well, I tried to, but uh, you guys were just overwhelming with the amount of support and the emails and the voicemails and text messages and everything that I received from you guys, not to mention all the comments on YouTube. So thanks so much for your support, really. It just uh, makes me feel good that everybody's behind this. So uh, just to give you a rundown, for all the people I didn't get a chance to respond to, it's just because it was too many, but uh, let me just bring you up to speed on what my plan is right now. So I'm going to keep uh, pushing along with this and uh, I'm going to, uh, first of all, the first thing I'm going to do here is get the prop adjusted so it uh, has more pitch on it and I want to try and dial in the whole aircraft so I can get it to um, enough speed for doing uh, like a high speed taxi test, enough that you know it's under load and it can be eventually flown into ground effect. And if I can prove that I can get it out here on the runway and uh, fly it in, in ground effect uh, we'll get it into ground effect, you know, using up, you know, less than a thousand feet of runway. We have four thousand feet remaining. Then eventually, I'll be able to actually, you know, do some ground effect testing with it, and uh, you know, prove that there's, uh, you know, no problems. And if there are problems, we'll fix them along the way, you know, with the winglets and the elevator and all that stuff. And then, uh, with respect to pilots, I'm going to be reaching out to Elliot and Justin. Uh, everybody had recommended them, and in fact, I met Justin a couple of years ago at uh, Oshkosh and asked him if uh, you know, him and Elliot might be interested in doing the test flying. So if you guys are watching, I'll be calling you eventually when I get a chance here. And uh, I'm definitely gonna be waiting until we have the redrive done and the constant speed prop working. So based upon how long uh, the guys usually take up north there to do our machining work, that'll probably come back around about the time of uh, Oshkosh, so the end of July, and then I'll be able to get that together. So in the meantime, we've got a bunch of different things that need to be fixed up. Uh, on the aircraft, all the things that Len recommended and you know other things that I still haven't done yet. So I'll just be uh, going through and uh, you know doing usual videos just like that and showing you what we're doing. And I'm actually going to try and get this thing out there on the runway today. Um, I want to see you know how it handles the extra pitch on the prop, and maybe just do a couple of uh, you know accelerate um, and then stop tests to see how much runway it takes to get to say 40 knots. I've already had it to 25 knots on the other side of the runway. So anyway. Um, Stay tuned and we'll see how that all works out. And yes, we will see how that all works out very soon. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Jeff and Devin were in on Monday and they did some work on uh, just figuring out a problem in the uh, aileron controls. It turns out the pulleys down here that are under the keel, and I'm trying to sort of zoom in on there, those pulleys there, they're bonded to the bottom of the keel, and the keel's, you know, carbon fiber. I think it's about a hundred thou thick layup in there. But when you're actually, um, you know, the flight controls are tight and you're sort of moving around, those um, pulleys are actually twisting on the floor themselves. And so underneath here, underneath the fuselage there where they're bonded to, there's actually a sort of uh, a divot in the, in the fuselage. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to brace those. And it's kind of a surprise that, uh, you know, that how close it is to the keel and how thick that layup is that it's actually warping like that but anyway um Britt uh, was nice enough to give me a little bit of channel here so we're going to sort of cut some brackets out of that and um, bolt them onto the pulleys and also onto the aft bulkhead and uh so moving on uh, i did some work up in here this is at the end of the strakes there where the aileron controls are and i just got um the things of bolts and stuff there tightened up and um got some cable ties and stuff around the cables and got the end rods there sort of locked into place and all that good stuff so just getting things sorted out there so it's all uh, neat and tidy and uh, as you can see now with the ailerons hooked up you can uh, move this one and then the other one over there goes the other way and if you look carefully in the cabin you'll see that the side sticks moving there but as I said there is some uh, play in there and we have to get rid of that and uh, on Sunday, managed to pick this up as I told you guys I was going to do. So uh, it's in really good nick actually. So what we need to do here is uh, just to do some mods to it. And I already went over to Brits there today and got the other, that came with a couple of different ends on there. I got these two ends there just on the lathe and took them down because they didn't fit in the axles that we had. So I got those sorted out and they just need to be put on there. and. Uh, Jeff actually put some fuel in that thing and just gave it one pull and it started, so that was pretty good. So you can see you got the extensions off there and just put those in there. 
and just to show everybody who's been wondering about prop clearance so uh, this is the aircraft just sitting normally on the ground right now and Devon's standing up the front there in order to pivot it a little bit but if you put a tape measure here you'll see uh, we have clearance there just natural clearance of uh, almost 12 inches is about 11 and right, three, 11 and a half, 11 and three quarters inches. I'll go all the way and to now the, when Devin the lifts the there. nose up just by pivoting on that thing, you'll see he's taken it there to about right. nine and, and a half. So that's about a two inch drop. And if we go around to where the nose wheel is, you'll see that's been lifted up. And if we measure how much it's been lifted, it's about three inches it's been lifted up. So in order to sort of uh, have a prop strike, mm -hmm. you'd have to pretty much get that nose wheel about, um, well, let's see, a good 12 inches off the ground or more before it would hit. And by then, the aircraft would be flying. So anyway, there's a little demo of the uh, tug working for you. And it's, you know, forward and reverse and a little five horse motor on there. and just uh, makes easy work of moving the aircraft around now which is nice and uh, little did I know it was going to come in handy by the end of the day and you'll see that in a little bit and I got some hardware back from Spruce so these are the little short uh, AN3 bolts there that I needed for that cross brace so I got those um, put in there and uh, all bolted up so that's now another job done and uh, we also got some uh, bolts in there to replace the, these ones in here with um, drilled bolts with castle nuts and um, cotter pins. So Devin's in the process of changing those out. You can see he's done that one there, hasn't put the cotter pin in yet. And then the one at the end here, that hasn't been done yet. That's just with a nylock on there, nylon lock nut. So we're changing those out because they rotate and they should have castle nuts on like some other people had mentioned as well. And Jeff's working on creating some little uh, stopper brackets there for the rudders that are adjustable. So that little bolt there is going to be adjustable and that'll push up or at least stop against that uh, bell crank there and allow the rudder to just sit, um, you know, nice and straight when it's in the uh, retracted position. So he's getting those done. And uh, my job here now finally is to adjust this prop. And you can see I've got about uh, just over five degrees on it now if you measure from the tips. I think that ends up showing about 84.5 or something like that, somewhere around there. So I wanted to put about 17 degrees on there altogether and kind of turn it into what would be, a, you know, ground adjustable prop that's set for a climb. And, you know, well obviously when the constant speed runs, it does that for you automatically, um, you know, with the governor. Uh, anyway, I wanted to set it on there and actually try running the engine under that sort of load and see what kind of thrust it produced and see how long it took to build boost with that much uh, sort of load on it. So uh, you know, I cut the uh, safety wire there on the two nuts there and undid the nuts, uh, loosened the nuts off and then started uh, you know, cranking on the, the back one there because that what that does is adjust the static pitch there. So I think I put about three and a half turns on there because every time you put a, a full turn on there it adds about three degrees or something like that, two and a half degrees put about three and a half turns on there and I managed to get it to about 16 and a half degrees so I was happy with that so I locked it down and then uh, did the uh, safety wire job on there and got that all safety wired again together so the nuts don't come loose and come flying off and then and along with the prop as well and I've done that quite a few times so it uh, goes fairly quick now and I know exactly what I need to do in terms of lengths when I'm doing the safety wire so there you can see it's all done I should have used my other camera and got in a bit closer for you but anyway there you can see that is done so I got the tug out and again and uh, took the aircraft outside and fired it up and let it warm up and the goal here initially was just to get any uh, air purged out of the cooling system again after I had put that valve in there in the heater loop in the cabin because you know, quite a bit of coolant drained out and I put it all back into the uh, coolant reservoir but obviously there's air in the line there somewhere I believe there was anyway um, and as you can see in the front there I've actually put a bunch of lead in there Britt was nice enough to lend us some lead as well got about uh, that and some other steel weights in there there's about 70 pounds in there right now 
because I don't want to go flying uh, now that there's wings and canards on there. So uh, anyway, that's uh, what's going on there. And um, yeah, I just let it warm up and then I, uh, I shut it off again and checked the um, coolant and um, tried to bleed any air out of the radiator, but there actually wasn't any. So uh, I don't think that, well, I'm pretty, pretty sure the whole engine didn't come up to temperature. So maybe the little um, channel in the engine that opens up at 217 degrees, maybe didn't, that didn't open up. Uh, anyway, I uh, decided to take it for a taxi there at the end of the day and uh, see how things were going there so took it down uh, the uh, taxiway on the other side there and uh, you know did a couple little run-ups and did a turn around and, and now you can see I'm actually heading down to uh, the runway down the end there and it's quite a ways down there it took a little bit to get down there because where I was taxiing around there is on the first half of the runway and this is the second half so it's you know 2500 feet down there it's basically half a mile to the end because um, you know the mile, the runway is pretty much a mile long 5000 feet we're you know mile being 5280 so I went all the way down to the end there and there was no one else around um, it was you know six after six o'clock this evening and I just wanted to do uh, a quick kind of uh, run up down there or you know on the runway uh, where I could just get a little bit more speed going and you can see there uh, the pitot tube is working so we're getting airspeed as well as ground speed from the GPS and I had no intention of going anything more than about sort of 30 or 40 knots uh, so I wanted to see how much uh, the engine was going to bog down with that, all that um, pitch on the prop and you know how long it would take for the turbos to spool up so as you see I'm getting close here down to the end and you know listening on the radio there's no one else around and made my call when I went out onto the runway there just to say I was doing a high speed taxi and on 2-3 there and when you're down the end here no one else can see you because uh, that our runway has a, a hump in it from one end to the other there you can see I'm making my call so you're down here you're pretty much all on your own <laughs> nobody nobody down there to see what you're doing or whatever uh, so anyway yeah taxied it out there and everything was going good and the engine staying cool and it wasn't so hot today it was about high 70s almost 80 degrees maybe and the air conditioning was sort of working on and off in the cabin there I think I need to do some more tweaking with that uh, but it was definitely working I wasn't uh, you know it wasn't hot in the cabin there with all the windows shut I feel like I had you know some cool air blowing on me which was good and uh, as you can see here I'll give it a bit of a run and uh, I'll see how that goes notice there that was actually quite a bit of black smoke coming out of the exhaust and I only saw that you know when I'm watching this video back now and and the reason for that is because of the pitch on the prop so the engine was bogging down you could feel it taking quite a while before the boost build up so you know pouring the fuel to it and it's just taking a while to actually you know spool up and subsequently there's just too much fuel in there so anyway uh, you know it's obviously possible to do this I'm just going to have to you know take the uh, or bring the power in slowly there to allow it to build boost without sort of drowning it with too much fuel and when the constant speed props working you won't have this problem because that's what exactly what the governor does it just makes it um, you know feed in the power um, or feed in the prop pitch as the en engine starts to sort of over speed and uh, here you can see I also just did another kind of little quick power run there just on the taxiway and just you know static 
and uh, just to you know see um, how well it was building up boost and such and then I moved up further back to where the aircraft are parked and I did another one as well just to see uh, again uh, how that's all working and uh, after this one I I heard a weird kind of sound going on something didn't sound right it sounded like there was a weird something was rattling kind of loose every now and then and so I actually shut the engine down got out and had a look and couldn't see anything obvious I just had a quick look you know and then I started it up again and then uh, sort of got out and obviously had the brake on got out and had a look to see if I could figure out what was going on and and, and really you know didn't have any luck but ultimately um, here I started up again and it, it, again it was still making this weird noise so I tried to sort of uh, see if I could uh, you know get it get it back to the hangar and as I put more power to it it just actually got kind of worse and ultimately I discovered that the LPEX there and you'll see in a minute had basically gone and um, broken so I guess the extra torque from the prop um, with all the um, you know force from the engine had been transferred onto that LPEX and it was the weakest point and uh, how's the aircraft moving right now? Well, I had to walk all the way across the runway there, go and get my new tug, <laughs> walk and bring it back. You know, fortunately, it drives itself. Uh, bring it back and then hook it up to this uh, aircraft and then tow it back across the runway. And fortunately, there was no one else around, uh, no other aircraft. And of course, you know, it was almost um, seven o'clock at this point, six thirty, seven o'clock. So, you know, all the people on the airport have all gone home. I'm just out there on my own, towing my aircraft across the runway. Anyway, <laughs> there's what the run looked like. And all the different power changes and things. And if I zoom in here where I did the, the three runs, the first one is, well, one of, them, one of them there is the one going up the runway. I think that's the very first one there. And then these two are the two power runs there. And then the last one that I did there is the one that I think um, actually broke the LPEX and the boost was about 41 pounds and that's not that high I mean I've had it there before plenty of times when it was on the test stand um, you know and we had I had more load on it before and it was only burning about 12 gallons an hour around about there so it should have only been about 230 horsepower but you know with how much load it was on there that was probably reading wrong um, anyway needless to say you've got to look up this LPEX thing and see uh, why it broke because it should have been able to handle these loads haven't had it that long and haven't put that many hours on it um, so yeah another setback one after the other just feel like I'm getting punched in the face every day <laughs> anyway so um, yeah let me show you in a second here what that LPEX looked like and it, it didn't look quite as bad as this um, when I first noticed it um, but when I tried to limp back to uh, the hangar of course it had already sort of broken and then it just started grinding on itself and rubber on rubber and yeah it just did not uh, go well so if I zoom in here you can see there's some rubber on the wing there from it and there it is that's the LPEX in there and uh, just a little zoom in there you can see it's not supposed to have that little black dark mark in there and if I spin the prop with my other hand over here from the camera you can see there's doesn't look good right it's not supposed to do that this thing's supposed to be able to handle all kinds of torque and it's been you know perfectly aligned and that so I don't know what's going on I'm just you know as I said I'm just getting beat up with this project uh, maybe I will take another day off tomorrow please don't like send me a bazillion emails and messages and stuff as much as I appreciate all your support Anyway, that's our update. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, by the end of the week. Thanks for watching.